So I want to welcome everyone to um, Career Karma's AMA tonight, Ask Me Anything, with a really special guest, um, Matthew, who is a software engineer out of Atlanta. Matthew didn't start out uh, as a software engineer. He went through a coding boot camp named Thinkful. He just went through a job search, and he has a starting date at a company called BlackRock in Atlanta end of this month and so this is a very special treat because uh, you're not going to be hearing advice from someone who did it 10 years ago you're going to literally hear advice on how to prepare how to pass interviews how to apply to these companies from someone who literally just did it like a couple of weeks ago okay so i want to say welcome matt welcome to the community thanks man i appreciate it it's awesome yeah it's really great yeah matt and yeah, and we're going to unpack a little bit about your job search um, in a second, but tell us about yourself. Like, what were you doing like a year ago before you before you wanted to break into tech? Yeah, so actually, I, I've been doing marketing for like the last five years and uh, just actually for like a very small local company in Atlanta. Uh, just, you know, I started there with basically one year of marketing experience and I did that. So basically no experience with uh, programming. Um, in high school, I played around a little bit with Python, but just like some commands in the terminal to make something, mm -hmm. say something. Uh, it was always something that interested me, but uh, yeah, I was never into it. So that's kind of my background. I, I kind of came into a clean slate and yeah, it's been a really awesome journey from, uh, from there to now. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> Cool, and now I'm gonna be asking you a few a few more questions just to kind of get the conversation started, and then we'll open it up for everyone else. Um, I know uh, I've been we've been running Career Karma for the last uh, like year and a half, and people always come to me and they're like, "I'm looking at a job description, and they want computer science graduates." Um, you're working at one of the biggest financial firms, BlackRock. I think they have a trillion dollar under management trillion dollars under management. Right. Yeah. So, um, how did you overcome kind of the 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 typical like companies are only hiring um, computer science graduates when you went through a boot camp? You didn't go through the traditional four year degree. Yeah, I think um, that was one thing. For one, the the program I was in, they were really big on stressing like don't really don't get down because of that. And then online too, it's like a lot of companies are like, hey got to have a four-year degree you've got to have a computer science degree but many of them they're just looking for people that can code that you mm -hmm. know are can come in and, and know what to do and, and boot camps really prepare you for that I think a part yeah. of that you got to get over that like you know insecurity and be like hey i'm gonna put myself out there and yeah it, it works so it's like i was really the interview was cool because it was it, it wasn't really about education or even previous experience it was like what can you do right now can you show me that yeah. you know yeah that's amazing um and um what did what made you like what was take me back to the moment when you decided to explore boot camps and you kind of put your foot down and said hey i want to seriously become a developer what, what was that moment for you yeah well i worked online already and i've been getting all these ads you know for for different boot camps and stuff and i always thought like that doesn't make any sense there's no way that's possibly a thing uh, but I just decided to do more research because I was kind of into tech and, you know, I thought it would be an interesting thing. And the more research I did, the more I was like, wow, this is this is actually a thing that you can do. And um, mm -hmm. then, yeah, I started, you know, just doing my own stuff, like the free code boot camps and all that type of stuff. Started liking it. And then at one point I said, you know, this is what I'm going to do. Kind of like what Nori was saying earlier, where you're like, OK, I'm in it now. So I got to, you know, do what I got to do. So, yeah, that was kind of yeah. when I was like, OK, this is going to be my career. Yeah. And um, how did you pick Thinkful out of, uh, I know there's a number of schools in Atlanta, there's some that are in person, some that are online. How did you decide on Thinkful? Yeah, so I really liked, for one, course report was really good with them, but I really liked, uh, for one, the whole online thing was really, really, that was a cool option. I liked their income share, I liked their, um, the things that they offered. I really like the personal mentor. That was one thing that I didn't see so much in other boot camps. But uh, Thinkful gives you this nice thing where you get a person, like a senior engineer, and you get to meet with them like twice, sometimes even more a week, but normally twice a week. 
And uh, yeah, they can, they talk you through any issues you're having. And they're not just there for like code questions. They're there for like career questions. What should I put on my resume? What do people care about with this? So that was one thing that made me think like, okay, Thinkful's a little bit different. So I like them. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to, we're going to unpack that a little bit more um, in terms of uh, the one-on-one -on -one mentorship. We obviously emphasize um, that. How did, did you feel like that played a big role in your success today? Yeah, actually, I can say personally, it definitely did. Because um, I graduated, actually, it's it's now like two months early, two, two and a half months early from the boot camp. Because you, you get marked graduated and thankful of you get a job. So I got a job two and a half months early. So graduated two and a half months early, which is nice. But um, one thing I really liked about that, my mentor is the person who encouraged me to start applying. Because... Um, I started showing her the stuff I was working on and, you know, it was that personal touch where you can say, okay, this is what I know how yeah. to do, what I've been doing. And she was like, you really need to start applying for jobs. And she even gave me um, some basic stuff about the way companies work with hiring developers and all that type of stuff. And like the timetables that are good to, uh, to apply. And, and yeah, just doing that, that's actually what led me to getting the interview to getting the job. So, Yeah. And sometimes you do need that push because this is, uh, especially for people career transitioning, I think it already implies you're doing it for the first time. And so um, a graduation date, I think with college, a graduation date is an accomplishment. But when you're doing a boot camp, getting a job is the accomplishment that you're truly looking for, right? And so um, it's great that you, sounds like you graduated two months early which course were you doing at Thinkful? Did you, were you doing their part-time or full-time course? Oh no, I was doing the full-time, the, uh, the immersion course, yeah. And I would recommend it. <laughs> yeah, great. And I know Thinkful also has living stipends in Atlanta. Did you take advantage of those? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Those are really good. That was another reason that I really liked them because um, I thought like, okay, if I'm trying to do the whole dev thing, not, not knocking anybody, you know, you can do whatever, it's cool. Yeah. But for me, I was like, nights and weekends are trying to kind of like, you know, learn this whole new, like you said, transition. I really wanted to do the full-time thing, but of course that would mean leaving a, a job. So it's really cool that they offer the uh, income, the um, stipend. So it's not like, you know, you're trying to sell all of your belongings or something like that. So that's nice. Yeah. And that's one of the big obstacles that I see people run into because everyone in career karma has drive. Uh, figuring out how do you f make the time, right? How do you uh, pay for your living expenses as you're doing a boot camp always becomes the obstacle. And some people do part-time courses, which also get you to the goal. I think a living stipend now, and it's not offered everywhere, but it's uh, some schools are starting to explore and offer that like thinkful. Uh, it just gives you like a shorter way of getting to your destination. And uh, with uh, living stipends, uh, it follows the same income sharing model, right? Where you pay once you're in a job, right? So that also puts people in a place where you, you can start literally thankful in a month from now, not have to pay them until you're in a job. Plus you, you'll have a way to cover your basic living expenses. Yeah. How much, uh, Matt, how much was the uh, living stipend? How is that set up? Just if people have questions about that. The stipend is uh, 1500 a month. So it's not like a million dollars, yeah. but it's not enough to meet basic needs. And uh, thankfully for me too, I had a small side hustle I was able to do. Uh, I was able to uh, be in, I, I taught like little courses on the side, uh, not related to programming, related to chess, which I also happened to play. So yeah. Also, cool. So. Is that what those trophies uh, are? Yeah, those are chess. Nice. <laughs> not baseball okay. or anything cool like that is chess. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Cool. And so I want to I, I wanna open it up now for people um, on Career Karma. Um, I do want to say that um, Thinkful, um, w one, of the, one of the things we recently did with Thinkful is um, we had a lot of people who were applying and they didn't have laptops um, to start. Like they can borrow their friend's laptop, they can go to the library, and they can... Um, get through the prep course, but at some point you actually need to have your own laptop if you're studying eight, eight hours a day. And so we discussed uh, with them about creating like a contest where over the next uh, two weeks until October 7th, um, we're gonna be giving away five MacBooks for people who 
get accepted into Thinkful. And I'm gonna actually post the, yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna post the link into the chat. Um, it's a contest where the, the ways you qualify is you, you do need to apply to Thinkful and you need to speak to their advisors to get accepted. Uh, that process, is, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, but then uh, if you end up getting accepted and you wanna enroll, those people could actually win a laptop so you can start your transition and don't have to wait for another month or two. Um, Bradley, I am gonna record, I'm recording this, so I will share this later. Uh, at this point, I would love to open up, uh, I would love to open up this AMA for any questions. Uh, if, you, if, you are, if you are about to ask a question, please uh, introduce yourself, uh, share like what your career goal is, and then just ask uh, Matt whatever question you want. Hey Matt, um, I'm Angela. Um, I'm about a week into the program with Career Karma. So far I've been applying. Thinkful was one of the first places I applied to. And then as well as um, Flatiron. And I've got a meeting with General Assembly on Monday. So I've got a couple I've been talking to. But Thinkful was the first one I talked to and I was really impressed by how much the, the advisor I talked to was talking about how they help you with finding a job and everything at the end. So I was really interested in it, but she was suggesting I do like nights and weekends, which I'm, like you were saying, I kind of want to jump all into it. But I've got three kids at home and I kind of run the household while my husband travels. How feasible, if I were to do the full time during the day, how feasible is it? Like, is there a huge homework load at night? Um, it kind of depends. And I would say that's a, that's a really good question. The thing for me, um, I had a similar type of situation. I knew I was going to be kind of busy at home. Um, so what I did was before I actually joined Thinkful, I did like two months of pretty much intensive self-study where I was kind of teaching myself the same on kind of a nights and weekends basis. And then for me, it wasn't quite as much homework because a lot of the stuff I was covering was more review than like my first time seeing it. Some of my friends that were in the class, that it was like their first time seeing it. They would be like, man, I had to spend like, like six hours at homework, <laughs> but it's not, I wouldn't say most of the time it's really not that bad. Um, as long as you're staying like on top of it. I do think it's feasible. Uh, Thinkful is really great because it's at home. Most of your time is spent pair programming with someone uh, in the class with you. So it's not like pretty taskmaster-ish. You know, if you need to run and go grab some laundry out of the thing, no one's going to be like, what are you doing? You're ruining us, you know? So yeah, I think it's feasible to do the, um, to do that. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. And, and a lot of your time is actually spent just like, working out details with your partner and like finding out stuff. So I actually do think it's pretty feasible to do, but yeah, as much prep work that you can do before you get in. So that it's not like your first time seeing this stuff. That's really great. And we're thankful right after you pass their um, entrance test, you have access to all the course material. So they provide that for you from day one. It's not like you have to complete stuff. So you can even like go through it ahead of time and maybe that can, that can help as well. Great, awesome. thank you. Angela, great question. Let's see, anybody else? I have a million questions for Matt, but anybody else wants to jump in? Anybody wanna know what the job search was like? Hi, I actually had a question. Hey Z. Hey, hey Matt, thanks for um, doing this AMA. Um, I am, part of the October 2nd Thinkful cohort. And my goal is to... One sec, uh, Z, one sec. Uh, can people mute their microphones if you're not speaking? Otherwise, and I'm gonna my... have to remove you. Okay, go ahead. My goal is to either get like um, a job that pays well after I graduate or to just kind of act as a consultant and do work on my own if I can't find something that one sec. <laughs> I, I think I just I had to remove this person. I just want to be able to like you know do coding whether it's on my own like as a side hustle or um, in a company that's a good fit. Uh, my question for you was first of all what was your learning style like 
because for me, I feel like I have to take a lot of notes and that kind of slows me down. And so I was going to ask, I did um, do what you're, what you suggested, which is to start early, but um, do you have any suggestions for like how to make sure you're staying within the time constraints? Like, is it okay to take notes or do you think there's a way to supplement that in a, in a different manner so that you don't get behind with, you know, staying with the, the grad plan? Um, yeah, notes are really great. There's actually one thing that's really cool. Uh, I know you said you're in Thinkful. Yeah. So one thing with Thinkful, uh, every morning you start off with like an hour long lecture, but the notes for the lecture, which are a slideshow presentation are always given to you like a week in advance. So, you know, even if you want to take your time, like break apart those slides, basically the entire lecture, it's not like the guy's just talking off the top of his head. He's just going slide to slide and like reading the slide and, and kind of explaining it. So you can literally like take your time and like pull those things apart. Um, me, I'm kind of a visual learner and I like to learn by doing things. So I supplemented a lot of my Thinkful stuff with Udemy courses as well. And I would like highly recommend that. If you like learn visually and you like to see like videos and hear people talking out stuff, um, sometimes because it's a fast pace at a boot camp, you might cover one topic in a day that you could realistically spend a week on. Um, so you can buy a Udemy course maybe on that topic or on something similar and you can like spend that you can have at least in your backlog like a week of information about that to supplement it for and of course Udemy courses if uh, you haven't got them before they're like $10 and they can be 40 hours long on that one topic that you only spent a day on so that's another way if you kind of need more notes and stuff I found that really helpful for me yeah and on, on the Thank topic you. of Udemy courses um, if you wait enough time, like usually there's like holiday specials. And so you never should pay more than $10 for a Udemy course. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes they're expensive, but like they'll have like a Thanksgiving special for 10 bucks a course. And so I think a lot of people start out like taking Udemy courses, free code camp. Like there's a lot of, a lot of free resources. Sometimes people also get overwhelmed because you kind of get into the tutorial purgatory where you're just doing like each JavaScript tutorials like for three months and then you're like, I still can't build a website. What's going on? Um, Matt, can you relate to that? And then what is the difference between doing like free code camp and doing a boot camp? What are some big differences for why people might consider doing a boot camp versus doing soft study? Oh my goodness. Oh well, yeah, doing a boot camp is a lot different than like doing free code camp because in a boot camp, I feel like you're doing more practical examples. Uh, you really get more of an explanation on how the code is working. Um, and a lot of Udemy courses slash like free stuff, I don't think the explanations given are always the greatest thing. So um, I think they're good like supplemental things. Like definitely do your free boot camp. Like no, don't knock them, but like, I mean, I wouldn't knock them is what I'm saying, but like on the yeah. same token, you're gonna have it would be way better if you have a boot camp and then along with that you're doing it to like reinforce um mm -hmm. it's nice because one thing with thankful you build projects like every day or i guess that's like a lot of boot camps. so you get to build stuff from the ground up and when you're not building from the ground up you're getting to do another really essential skill which is looking at code bases stuff that you haven't written and figuring out what it what it does and that's really cool so yeah that i would say that's the big difference you're not working on like small little chunks and uh, the quality is really good. Cool, awesome. Let's see, we, we have a lot of time for questions, so not, don't all jump at a question. once. Go ahead, Chad. Hey, thanks. <laughs> hey, thanks for uh, sharing your experience, I appreciate it. Uh, it's just my first day here, so I uh, have an idea of like a personal project I'm interested in. Of course, I'm also here because I'm looking for a better career uh, just if you can think back that far in your experience here, how did you uh, weigh your options of all the different uh, directions in education uh, that you can choose from to decide what you wanted to do here? Yeah, it wasn't too far back for me. <laughs> um, <I'm> just, <laughs> yeah, for me, I mean, um, the, only, the two options I thought of getting into the field, like when I saw it and I was doing my research, it was like, okay, you can go the, uh, the college option. For me, that wasn't too much of an option. It was a really big time. And, and everyone knows, I think, in this generation, 2019, a lot of times you pay a lot of money for college and the practical skills you learn are not that great. You know, I have several of my friends, actually, it's funny, we're all like at the same 
they's, they just graduated with computer science degrees and they're getting into the web development field for their jobs, but they don't know much about web development. So they're like, hey, how does this work? And how does that work? They know a lot about like, you know, theoretical stuff. And it's not that it's not important, but there's, uh, I, from what the research I did, it seemed like boot camps really give you the practical skills in the shortest amount of time. And you can get a job with them. So with all of that, the only option I had to weigh personally for myself was the self-study option. Um, Cause that was a big thing for me. Cause I was like, well, I can just teach myself these things. Um, but after doing, I kind of did a little of both. Cause I started out the first three months was all like self-study. And then I joined the boot camp, and I really got to see kind of the advantages and disadvantages of both. The boot camp was really nice because I had structure. Um, there was something, you know, I was assigned something to do every single day, and it wasn't necessarily what I just wanted to do. So it wasn't like, oh, today I want to build an app that does this, so I'll build it. It was like build an app that categorizes a library and sends back, you know, responses from a server. And maybe I don't want to do that, but at an actual job, if I'm going to get a situation, they're not always going to give me my dream project that I want to work on. I just have to fix a bug or do something. So I thought that was a really cool part of it, just getting assignments, stuff I probably couldn't have thought up for myself, and then being placed in a situation where they're like, hey, do this. So that kind of getting to see that experience, that kind of pushed it ahead of being just self-study. And that made it like, that's what I want to do. That's what the way I want to do. Thank yeah, you. That's empowering. It makes me think of when you go to the gym, like I personally never had a personal trainer. I never paid a personal trainer, but like I've seen people like almost give up and then like people could work out next to me and then their personal trainer is like yelling at them and then they'll put in a few extra reps. And usually when you're learning, like when you're doing something like learning how to code, um, you don't know what you don't know. And so it's very easy to just be on a path to just keep making progress but you're making progress either uh, at a slower pace or not in the right direction at all and um, everyone from my experience like there's a lot of people with opinions online right if you go type in what language you should learn for computer science to like to learn how to code everyone has their own opinion right and so as a newbie it's hard for you to see through like should i be learning python or ruby or javascript because there's a lot of arguments for either um personally i think you you should just pick a school that fits your like pace full-time part-time format online in person uh, obviously look at finances that's critical income sharing or paying up front or loans like there's a lot of different differences but then don't like I, I think the stack if you're learning python or javascript it's actually not as important because once you learn a single programming language and you know how to build an app which in this day and age schools will teach you how to build full stack applications you can then pick up other languages as you go along because you understand all of the parts that that are put into building an app you know yeah, like, and no, 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 go ahead go ahead i was just saying funny it's funny you mentioned that like the job i got hired to do uh, uses none of the technologies that I learned in school, not a single one of them, which is kind of fun. So it's a new adventure. But yeah, that was one of the things at the interview. It's like they're more interested. Do you know core concepts? Do you know data structures? Do you can you do do you understand like how to code? And then they feel like if you can learn one framework, if you can learn one language, you can learn the other. So that's cool. Yeah. Is anyone shocked or surprised that the stuff that that Matt learned in a boot camp? is actually different than what employers are using on the job and he's still got a job no Nora, you're raising your hand feel free to post in the chat if you're a little shocked and surprised um can you <laughs> i'm actually curious about that uh what what languages did you learn while you're going to boot camp and what are you working with now uh, yeah, so the languages i learned was um the mern stack is what it's i guess well actually i lied <laughs> the Martin stack is it's uh, Express um, and on the front end. It's React as the front end. As your back end, they're using Express, which is still JavaScript. And then um, for the database layer, we use PostgreSQL. And am I forgetting something, Lord? If I was forgetting something, no, I think that's it, pretty much, right? I could be forgetting something, but I think that's it. Um, yeah, and then, then the job I'm working, I'm using Angular, um, and I'm also using Flutter, which is a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's for mobile apps. It's a Google thing. So uh, 
It works in a language called Dart, which is kind of like a mix between like, it's a mix between like Java and Java. It's almost like TypeScript, which is like a, a superset of JavaScript. It's a little bit different, but it's kind of cool. Yeah. And yeah, like, like um, I wasn't, a, it, it was just one of those things where it's like, yeah, you can learn it. So even right now, that's what I've been focusing on the last like week is learning this stuff and learning Angular, which is completely different from React, but it's all the same thing. So yeah. Yeah. That actually um, leads into the question I was going to ask, if that's all right. Nice accent, yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm Angela. Um, I live in Tucson, Arizona. Um, but yes, as you notice, I am from Australia. Um, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I work in the tech scene. I work with software engineers. Um, so I know from my company with a team of like a two engineer, like startup company, what that job looks like, but I don't understand, you know, in bigger companies, what does the job look like? Like, what's your experience? Do you just have a list of things that you need to get done in the day or do you do part of the design process? Like, what does your day look like? Like, how do you well, know? I can't, I can't speak on that too much because my start date is actually on the 30th, but I can tell you that the difference mainly in bigger companies is that everything, everything is a separate job. So the smaller ones, it's like, they're trying to hire you and they're like, yeah, so you're a full stack. You're going to do the server. You're going to do that. You're going to be running back. But like for my job, I get hired on the front end engineering team, but we have separate designers. We have separate people that, you know, do all the back end stuff. We have, um, we have people that run the test, the um, DevOps, you know, we have a whole separate thing. So in the smaller companies, you're the DevOps, which means you're the guy that's doing the tests and looking at all this stuff and getting it deployed. And you're the person that's also writing the code for the front end, what people are going to see and writing the server. So um, it's, I, and I've heard like various people like different stuff. Some people are like, yeah, I want to do it all. That's awesome. And other people are like, I just want to do my tiny little share and you know, so it's kind of whatever you're into. Matt, can you explain what front end is and like what, what is the difference between back end, full stack, um, People uh, hear a lot. Uh, Keisha is, in fact, on this call. Keisha, I'm going to call you out. Uh, Keisha was one of the first people who did her 21-day challenge. And uh, I'm not going to pull up her Twitter video, but she was like, when she first started on day one, she was like, I'm going to become a software developer, software engineer. I'll find, <laughs> out on the, uh, I'll find out on the challenge later. Yeah. So can you explain to people who are just starting out, uh, what are the differences in terms of the role? and um, also in terms of the type of job that you do uh, once you get hired. Yeah, so it's kind of it's kind of the way it sounds. The front end engineer is the person that's going to work on uh, the user what the user experience, what the person is actually going to see and interact with. You're the person that codes that up. So it's a it's a visual. If you're a visual person, then it's great for you because that's what you're you're handling. And on the back end, you're dealing with uh, interacting with the database. So getting data from some database or some server and then sending it down into a client, someone's computer. And then, so that's the back end portion. The front end portion is the person who's displaying that information. So one person gets the information from a server, sends it back, the front end guy works on displaying it and also working on things like user flows. So like when you log into an app, what page happened when you log in, when you hit the login button, where are you redirected to and where do you go? Well, that could be some back end. it depends on what you're using. But if it, you know, where, what do you see next and what happens like that? That's front end, that's the front end person's job. And yeah, the back end person works on the, the nitty gritty data modeling and all that type of wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great way of describing it. I think people also will hear words like uh, developer, engineer, programmer. They also tend to mean the same thing pretty much. Um, people just use it inter interchangeably. And also when you look at coding boot camps, some people, some coding schools are like, hey, we're going to teach you to be a web developer. Others are like, with our course, you're going to be a software engineer. And so majority of what schools mostly teach is they teach you how to build an app, both back end and front end, just so you know how, how to put all the pieces together. In Matt's case, he's going to be a front end engineer. So it's still, it's helpful for him to know how the back end works, right? But in his company, there's going to be someone else who might handle like authenticating the user, making sure that data is like stored properly. But uh, Matt's job is going to be making sure the functionality works, whatever the user can click on. Um, 
it actually works as intended and it's a great experience. So that's kind of the, the big difference in a nutshell. Um, I want to I wanna see if do people have any questions uh, for Matt about like getting the job, the job search. Anybody have any questions about that? Yeah, I wanted to ask how long was the job search and also what were the questions on the technical interview? Uh, so for me, the job search wasn't super long, which was awesome. It's, I mean, it's a blessing. I mean, for me, my job search was probably like a month and a half. I started applying in August. And uh, yeah, so I, I started, my goal was to start applying like August 1st. And so I started applying in August and yeah, I got the job. I think September 9th is when I got my offer. Um, but the, uh, you know, I, 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 in that time though, I submitted so many, so many, 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 many resumes, like so many cover letters customized to each company. So it's, it's definitely not like just the, oh yeah, you know, I walked out there and got a job. You have to work for it, but uh, it does work. When the questions for the technical interview, um, so I did a couple of different technical, uh, well, I did, there was multiple rounds of the interview. So the first round was pretty simple. Um, it was like some, some questions on how React worked. Um, one thing that they really tried to do with this company was they really tried to see like how you were up to date. So they asked me like, after the six, you know, after React 16 has come out, so what changes are there? Uh, what, how is that gonna affect the way that we develop things? And it's funny because they don't even really use React, but they knew that I knew React. So uh, <laughs> they, uh, they asked me questions about that. And um, there was a whiteboard there. So they asked me, you know, coding questions. Uh, the first interview wasn't super difficult. You know, the coding mm -hmm. questions weren't really hard. Uh, the second round of interviews was three interviews. They were an hour in each for this uh, company. And they were on the same day. So we went there and there was like a 30 minute or 40 minute presentation. Then they took us to these nice little glass sales that you sit in. And then we had uh, interviewers come in one for one hour and then he would leave. And then the next person would come for an hour and they were leaving. And then the third person came for an hour and then they left and they asked uh, different questions. One, they're, they're working. They want to see your people skills. It's not just about you being a robot and typing code. So they want to see like, oh, is this person excited? Do, are they passionate about what they do? Um, do they want to learn more? All that stuff. No one's expecting you to come out of a coding boot camp and be like, you know, talking in ones and zeros and craziness. Uh, they want to know that, you know, you've got a nice personality. And then, yeah, the company I worked at, I guess because they developed, it's a really big company. They're like, I think the largest financial asset manager in the world, it's something like that. But they, they were really focused on like data structures and algorithms. So they asked me, questions about that but thankfully i was prepared because uh, there's a whole section of that in the boot camp and i had also used a lot of resources that were referred to me by the thankful career team so uh, i was able to do it you know and it took it was definitely something that if i just walked in out of the street and i hadn't done any preparation probably wouldn't went well but you know, with preparation it went pretty good you know nice um Matt, when it came to uh, Thinkful Steam, uh, how did they? So you mentioned they point you to a bunch of resources. Uh, what is the what is the phase when you're searching for a job? Like, do you meet with your mentor and they review your projects? Like, what 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 does the bootcamp help you with when it comes to you finding a job? Yeah, so it's a lot. For one, so I went personally to my mentor because, like I said, I graduated a little early. When you get into that phase, you do do all of those things. But uh, for me. I showed my mentor my projects that I worked on personally and, uh, you know, had them go through my portfolio. I had them like go through my website and tell me what they thought and all that kind of stuff. They, I mean, the, that was really cool. You know, I got advice on my resume. Uh, the Thinkful Careers team is awesome. So as soon as you tell them like, hey, I'm going to go apply for jobs, they're not like, okay, cool, have a great day. They're like, okay, send me your resume. Then they like go through your resume and they like highlight stuff like you need to get rid of this you need to add this section and can you, you know, put this on top of this, put that on top. So they like completely structure your resume, which is really cool. Um, and then from there, uh, they, yeah, they, they like give you a coaching class. So like before a day before my interview, like I had a coaching class with one of the people and after I passed the first round, yeah, I had a coaching class with someone on the careers team for a good hour, just like going through, she listed a ton of resources I could go to. Uh, online, she hit me with like, you know, difficult questions. 
ask me, hey, do you have any questions going in? What are you worried about? What do you think they're going to ask? And that was really critical to me because a lot of the questions, she gave me a spreadsheet. And a lot of the questions that were on the spreadsheet were actually asked to me. And those weren't the technical questions, but those were like the soft skills, like what's the most challenging bug you've ever faced? Or how did you overcome a problem with a, a fellow student or a coworker? Just stuff like that where you're like, okay, I'm already thinking about those things. And that was really great. Yeah. I think people don't realize that um, when you do interviews, you think your interviewer just wants you to get the right answer. They want to see how you think. They want to see, like, uh, are you someone who communicates well? And uh, does anyone want to take a guess why communication is important? If you're an engineer writing code, why do you think communication is important? Because you'll be working with other engineers. <laughs> that's, that's definitely true. But I think the main thing is, yeah, Keisha, you're going to say something? I was going to add... Um not only are you communicating with other engineers, but a lot of times the engineering department has to communicate with other departments within the company in order to be effective. So you might be working with the product department or if it's a client facing company, um, there's a lot of people that you're going to be communicating with, not just your computer. Yeah. And, and yeah, the reason I I'm agree at, with that. Yeah. I, I was going to say I'm client yeah. facing um, in my role. And so I work with our software engineers all the time and it's really important that they understand you know, the needs that I'm talking about and not just going straight to solution, but actually thinking about the design and actually thinking about that experience as I'm describing it so that they can communicate back to me what they're going to build and we can kind of come to an agreement of what's going to happen. So yeah, that's communication is so important for me because I'm not an engineer yet, but um, I work with them and it's, oh man, so important yeah. for the rest that's of the team. Say as well, like being able to communicate technical things in non-technical language you can't you can't just speak tech to non-technical people in the business so that's it's super important to be able to articulate yourself well yeah it's funny you said that so my last question the last question i did before i left the building for my interview the guy was like okay you answered because you know we went through the algorithms or whatever he was like okay you did great on those and he was like now i need you to explain to me how computers work like I know nothing about computers. Like, I had to explain to him the internet, how it worked with like how the press work with responses and how all that type of stuff. And that was really actually cool. So like I had to use like illustrations and be like, it's kind of like with the house and this and that. And that was like my last question. He was really happy with that after I did it. He was like, that was great. And he mentioned because we work with, like you were saying, Angela, you know, he was like, we work with so many people that don't know about tech and you have to be able to explain to them in a way even even if they they want to know why should i do it this way or why do we need to do this you need to be able to explain like oh because it would help out with this and yeah it worked out yeah and uh, i i love all of the points that you made um what what you'll have to realize is that as you're getting into a tech role like part of the goal is to actually build a product um a product that the whole team like a product that the whole team uh, thinks is the right product. And what I mean by that is um, the developer might have their own vision of what the right product is, right? And the product manager coming in, they might have their own, they're like, oh, I, there's going to be a nav bar and then you're going to click on this thing and the, this page is going to open. And then they go to the engineer, they're like, hey, build me this nav bar. It's going to go, you're going to click on it, it's gonna, the page is going to open. And Two weeks later, the engineer delivers it, but they're like, well, this it's on the wrong page. Or like this thing, it was like miscommunica miscommunicated. And so the reason communication skills are important is um, you need to be able to ask a lot of questions about like what you're about to build, right? So if you're meeting with your manager and he's like, or she's like, you're about to spend the next week implementing login for our page it's on you to also know, like ask a million questions to make sure that you account for all the edge cases that you understand like what they want you to build. So by the time you build it, there's no surprises, right? And that's why communication is so important. Um, I think a lot of people in career karma, if you're part of a squad, the reason we tell you to be part of a squad is you actually are beginning to work on your soft skills you're beginning to work with other people in groups 
studying together, learning together, uh, coding boot camps like Thinkful. They also make you work with other students on projects. So you also get to see people's different working styles. How do you collaborate? How do you build something as a team? And that's why it's important for companies when they're interviewing you to know that not only is this person, like they understand JavaScript, but there's a lot of people who know JavaScript, but how is that person gonna be on a team? Am I gonna like working with them? Am I gonna be butting heads with them all the time? And so all of those are very important things that a lot of you already have that you're bringing into the table, whether you were in sales, you're a teacher, maybe you were a veteran and you were managing people under you in the army or the Navy. So all of you have a lot of skills that you're bringing in into this new role. Um, Cool. Uh, I think um, there's a, there was a, someone who's on the train and they asked me to ask you a question. Um, someone asked, uh, were there any questions that your mentor couldn't answer? Um, um, okay, so yeah, that's a good question. Um, every mentor at Thinkful, like they're senior engineers, but they, they work in different fields and they, they have experience with different languages. All of them, of course, uh, no JavaScript, but maybe they don't specifically work with React. Like, let's say a lot of boot camps these days are teaching React. So let's say your mentor is a is a Ruby developer and they don't really know React that well. So maybe if you have a React specific question, they might be like, "Well, I don't, I don't know." But they're not just gonna say, "I don't know." They're probably gonna like point you to some documentation and try to look it up with you during the call. Um, but the nice thing, again, I can't speak for other boot camps because I haven't been. But like. Um, Thinkful holds like workshops. So they have like people that are like experts at React and experts at Node and experts at JavaScript and jQuery. And you can go to those workshops and ask very like uh, um, language specific questions, I would call them. So if you're having a specific issue, then you can ask that. Um, that would be the only thing I would say mentors can't do. Um, I mean, can't do. Mentors, maybe not always the time, but uh, me and my mentor, we really didn't have problems like that. I more use my mentor for like advice about um, like career questions and advice for like uh, maybe like design questions. Like what should I, not design as in like artistic design, but like how should I write my code? How should I structure it? Questions like that. And they're really good. Even like naming, how am I going to name? <laughs> naming conventions are important, guys. So, you know, even asking questions like that, you know, that was stuff that I got help with. Yeah, awesome. Um, any any other questions? I have a few for Matt, but I want to see if people have any questions. We have about ten minutes left. Yeah, go ahead, Keisha. So, um, uh, luckily for you, Thinkful had a mentor for you. I have several. So how do you determine? <laughs> how do you determine? Um, or in your job search, how did you determine? what advice to take and what advice not to take. Um, because, you know, there's so much information about how to approach the job search and what you should do. Um, how did you determine like what was gonna work best for you? I mean, for me, honestly, it was like apply everywhere, you know? Um, I wasn't really worried about specifically what technology was on there, what, I mean, I didn't apply for like a senior Ruby on Rails developer with 10 years of experience, because, you know, probably probably I'm not the best fit but if I can find something pretty relevant I just apply to it and put a pretty good cover letter on there to hope you know and I think that's like the best thing to do because um I mean and again look at that that's more advice that's exactly what you know but <laughs> um I mean I don't think there's any silver bullet like you said everybody's got a different philosophy but I think yeah just applying to as many places as you can and just seeing if you can get into the interview because i feel like a lot of people as long as you get into the interview then you can show like yeah i've got people skills i know how to code that's what they're really looking for but the more applications you do the, the more likely you can actually get an interview and then it'll be great yeah um, it's hard it's hard finding advice because like you said online there's just so much out there so many people are like you should do this you should do that but you know just follow your heart now <laughs> but you know apply as much as you can and, and I'm sure I'm sure that'll work yeah do you feel like you had a lot of um, networking opportunities being that it was online that's kind of my only concern 
Yeah, so one thing they push at um, Thinkful, that thankfully I actually kind of knew about before, but it's something that's good. They pushed that Meetup, which is an app. Um, so if you download Meetup, I don't whatever city you're in, there's pretty much always there's tech stuff going on with Meetup. So they have groups that you can go to. Like I'm probably a part of like six or seven groups. And I went to several Meetups. Like uh, I'm in Atlanta, so North Alvareta, JavaScript. Um, you know, there's like JavaScript and Atla Atlanta. And they generally hold like little events where you can go to. And it's just like developers from different companies. A lot of, it can be, there's like the recreational ones where they're like, hey, we're gonna go out and get a drink or whatever. But there's also ones where you just go and like listen to a lecture on a topic. And even if you don't really know too much about the topic or you're just hearing like, wah, 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 you know, it's a great opportunity afterward to, to meet up with people. So uh, that's how I did most of my, uh, yeah, yeah, see, that's a good one. Um, that's how I did most of my um, networking with people. And that actually was cool. I got uh, several, several leads from that that were really good. So yeah, I actually was able, so this isn't technically my first, first um, job. I actually got a, um, what is it called? A freelance, a freelance, like very small job. But yeah, just from that, just from networking, going to meetups, it was like, hey, a guy that's, that needs somebody to, to do this. It was something I never worked with. It was WordPress PHP. And it was like, hey, it's a job. And I took it actually while I was doing Thinkful. I just did it at night. And yeah, it was a good way to make a bunch of bucks. I was like, yeah, it's nice. So that was good. Yeah. And uh, I think um, as you're going to these meetups, uh, some of the benefits that you get from going to the meetups, one is um, you're starting to get like the lay of the land in terms of what companies are in your city. Uh, by going to these going to these meetups and meeting people who work at those companies, so that's already very important. Because how many people on this call have heard about BlackRock? So there's there's a few of you who who heard about BlackRock. How many people, when someone says a tech company or a software engineer, how many people think about BlackRock? <laughs> Keisha is the only exception, and the truth is is that. Uh, BlackRock, I'm, I'm just guessing, but there probably have thousands of engineers like nationwide, right? right? And people don't think of BlackRock as an engineering tech company, but they're just also just one company in Atlanta or like one company that hires thousands of engineers. How many engineers do you think Bank of America has, right? Or um, Wells Fargo? And, and then you got financial places, they pay better than the tech. So if you do some research, the financial, like you get into banking or like BlackRock, Bank of America, they pay more than the tech job a lot of times. So that's another little bonus. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm glad that you brought up salary and salary is one of those things where um, we don't want to put you on the spot. And so if you don't feel comfortable sharing, it's okay. But I know... People, people always like money and your salary, especially when you're putting everything on the line and you're taking out ISAs or loans or you're literally like quitting jobs to do this. It's a big deal. So do you mind giving us either ranges or some uh, uh, like some estimates on what people can expect in the market like Atlanta as a bootcamp grad to be making in your first job? Well, I mean, I can tell you like personally, I'm not I'm not really nervous with that okay i got offered eighty five thousand with a eight thousand dollar bonus annually which is i mean that was really great mm -hmm. um and in atlanta it's you know you can make a good amount of money i would say the range is like 65 to like super high end maybe 90 ish mm -hmm. or like starting out in the 90s really really high but at least at least 65 i would say in atlanta going up so it's definitely something it's worth it you know it's an investment but yeah you can definitely I get high. I was, I, I asked for, and just, yeah, just to show you some encouragement guys, I asked for like 75. They were like, what will you be happy with? And I was like 75. And I was hoping they were going to say 70. And they laughed when I said 75. I was like, oh, don't worry. It'll be more than 75. And I was like, cool. Interesting. And then was 85, so that was pretty good. So yeah, guys, it's, it's, it's nice. Yeah. Uh, someone, I think Gil asked, um, so now that you have a job, how much of your salary are you paying back or are you projected to pay back uh, to Thinkful just to give people an idea? Yeah, so for the, <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, yeah, so for the first 
three years, I think it is, you pay 15% back of your income. Uh, so that's, you know, that's something, but really it kind of factors in, it's worth it, I would say that, you know, you pay 15%, but that's not like the end of the world. Yeah, so. Yeah. If I can add on to that too, that most boot camps, thankful included, you pay 15% back of your income, the max is three years. So with him coming in at 85, he's probably gonna hit the max. He's gonna pay back well before the three years are even up. So you may not necessarily be paying that long. Yeah. And the, the other thing I wanna emphasize is that <clears throat> this is uh, Matt's first job as a software engineer, right? Out of a boot camp making 85,000. Um, in two, three years, when he looks for another job, like he's going to be breaking six figures, like maybe even a lot more than that. Okay. And uh, in five years, when Matt is a senior engineer, like, and we're talking about Atlanta, where like the cost of living is way cheaper than San Francisco. I know this because Ruben Archer and I, we met in Atlanta and we used to live there. Like when you're a senior engineer in Atlanta making like 150,000, that's a pretty good living out there, right? And so that's a path that that's available to people without going back to college, without taking on crazy loans, right? With income sharing, if, if Matt didn't find a job, then he wouldn't have to pay them back. Now that he did, he's paying a percentage of his salary and the school is incentivized to help Matt actually get jobs, right? So that's, the, that's what's different today versus even five, 10 years ago, you know? And yeah, I wanted to point out too with that, uh, for anyone that's like nervous about that, nice things with Thinkful, again, can't speak for other boot camps, but uh, they don't, you don't actually start paying back anything until you start making above 40,000. So if you don't have a job or something like that, you don't have to worry about them like coming in the contract. And also another nice thing, which I found out, which I was really happy about, if your earnings ever go below 40,000, they stop taking it out. So like, let's say, God forbid you get a job, it's all going great. And then, you know, something crazy happens and you end up without a job. You don't have to worry about them going, where's the 15%, you know? <laughs> so that's a nice little comforting thing as well. Yeah, I will say that um, just so people can learn from, uh, uh, from um, Matt's mistakes, you should never undersell yourself in terms of your ask, right? When you're negotiating, because you never know what the other comp what the company can afford to pay you, right? And in Matt's case, he got lucky that the company was like, "Don't worry, like we got you," right? But that's that's not there's not a lot of companies out there, and they'll be if if they think you're worth eighty five, but you don't think you're worth eighty five, and you think you're worth only sixty five, most companies would have said okay, like, can we do 60, right? <laughs> Even though they could have paid a lot more. So um, going into this process, um, you, wanna, you don't want to seem cocky and you don't want to seem like ungrateful and like throw out insane amounts to the point where they're like, this, is per this person is junior, they want to make what? But there's definitely ways to structure the ask where you actually get the company to give you the number first and then you're able to work from that number up or you're able to negotiate. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I will never make that mistake again. You're right. Because when they laughed, I was like, really, guys? Is that, I was like, is that a, a small amount of money? <laughs> yeah, so next time. I was yeah. told, so I found on out. Glass you can, like, on, <laughs> glass door, on glass door, BlackRock is stated at starting at 90. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I saw that. But I don't yeah. know. I feel like they, so were, they were probably expecting that you were going to ask for that since that's what it says on Glassdoor. Yeah, I was I kind of looked up some people and people were saying that Glassdoor can be kind of exaggerated because people that report their salaries sometimes have been there for mm -hmm. kind of a while. So I was trying to kind of temper it. But yeah, I definitely shouldn't have definitely yeah. shouldn't have started. This movie. But you but, but I think you got a good deal. I think you you did well and you got a bonus, which is great. Um, for in terms of uh, let's do like one one last question um, in terms of uh, overcoming imposter syndrome, I, I ask I ask people um, who join in on the AMAs all the time because uh, people think that uh, everyone 
who succeeds, uh, they're just like better than them. And when you join a boot camp, you people think sometimes you might feel like people around you are just grasping the material a lot quicker than you. And there's something wrong with you because you're getting stuck on problems while it seems like others are just like uh, flowing through them. And that happens with everything that you do in life, like um, even starting your first job, right? You might think like you're an imposter. People are going to realize that you don't actually know how to code, even though you passed the interviews and now you are in a job. So Matt, in your case, did you ever feel the imposter syndrome? And if so, how did you, what did you tell yourself to overcome that? Yeah, I think everyone kind of feels imposter syndrome. And I think that's something that kind of hangs on no matter how much, like even now I got the job, I, I feel imposter syndrome, like how, what am I going to do now? You know, and it's, but um, I think a lot of it, yeah, you just have to tell yourself that that's what's going on right now. So when you feel like, oh, I can't do this, I'm not getting it. You know, for one, code isn't the easiest thing to learn. There's always new stuff to learn. But the nice, I think the best thing that I keep in my mind uh, that I've kind of seen and learned from being around a lot of developers and also from, you know, watching, being, you know, reading Medium articles and YouTube and all this stuff. Everybody is learning new stuff. So like every two years, something, I mean, every every six months, something's getting updated, something's changing. So you're always going to be in that kind of learning state where you're learning new things. That's the cool thing about, I think, this career. So when you're learning something and it's hard, just keep in mind, you're, you're always going to be learning something. It's always going to be a little bit different. Um, and everybody's there right with you. So we're not, none of us are like, oh, way ahead and way behind. It's like everybody's just learning at our different paces and everybody's going to get to the same goal. So, you know, that's one thing I try to tell myself. It's like, we're all, all going to hit that goal. So you just got to keep going for it. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Matt, for sharing. I think someone asked uh, in the comments a few last questions. I heard most people are making in the area of 100K when coming out of a boot camp. Um, I would say that 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 that's that data. It's based on your location. Yeah. Uh, like there's um, people in the Bay Area, me included. When I first broke into tech, I was making six figures, but uh, the hundred k you make in San Francisco doesn't go as far as the eighty five you make in Atlanta. And so, when you listen to schools throw out numbers, also ask them like the average salary that your school, your grad, the school's graduates get, is that nationwide? Is that in Atlanta? Is that just like only in this specific city? Uh, so you got to definitely do research uh, and pay attention to that. Um, on, this, uh, on this call, as our community matures and grows, you have people who got jobs, people in the job search, people just starting out. Uh, remember to reach out to each other, right? Keep building these connections. Uh, everyone knows what it was like to be on the outside breaking in and also being on like day one of career karma or day one of the boot camp, day one on the job. And so never hesitate to reach out to folks. Um, and Matt, for those of us who want to stay in touch with you, what is the best way for them to reach you? Are you on Twitter, LinkedIn, email? What's the best way? Yeah, I'll put my email in the chat for everybody. So you can definitely cool. have that. I'll share with you guys my website. So if you ever uh, want, you can pop yeah, over. Yeah, that website. would be great. And I'm, I'm assuming your portfolio is on the website too? Oh, yeah, yeah. I ha I Perfect. actually need to update it a little bit with some more current stuff. There's my website. Cool. There's my website. So yeah, make sure to check out uh, Matt's uh, website too to get an idea of the types of projects uh, he built post boot camp. Um, and as a reminder to folks, if you join late um, this this uh, month for the next like two weeks, we are doing a contest because um, we have a lot of people who joined Career Karma. They want to learn. They don't have a MacBook to start the school. And so Thinkful is doing a sponsorship with us where they're going to be we're, jointly. We're going to be giving away five MacBooks to people who apply to Thinkful and get accepted and they want to start school, they don't have a laptop. So there's a high chance that um, people who actually follow the steps will be able to win one. Um, and I'm going to share the link to the raffle in the chat. Um, I encourage you to be proactive. Um, tweet, tweet at Matt. Matt, do you have a Twitter? Um, I actually don't because I'm, you know, I'm terrible with that. Okay. It's all good. It's, but yeah, keep keep in touch with Matt. Keep in touch with each other. Let me know how we can do. What other guests you want to have on the on the AMAs? And just always remember that uh, there's 
hundreds of thousands of companies out there and you only need one job. So if you have a dream, uh, protect your dream, don't stop, keep going. And as long as you keep going, eventually you're gonna, one of the companies, it's inevitable that they'll give you a job. So just keep, keep moving on, okay? Uh, have a great night, everyone. It was a pleasure. Thanks a lot. Let's give Matt a round of applause. Yeah, so nice meeting you guys. Yeah, right? let's. You can unmute yourself and just say thanks to Matt. Thanks a lot, Matt. Thank you, thanks, Matt. Matt. It was really great. useful. Thank you, Matt. See you later. Gotta Thank go great. Bye. Have guys. a great night, everyone. Bye. Have a good night. Good night. Bye. Thanks, Matt. Have a great night. Thanks, everyone. Matt. <laughs> thanks. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Okay, bye. Take care, everyone.